Understanding how God leads. We'll run through it very quickly. And then spend some time tonight to celebrate the faithfulness of God. If that shout is to him, you can make it louder and better. <laughs> Understanding how God leads. And I'd like for us to be reminded that when God leads you, you can't suffer lack. When God leads you, you can't suffer scarcity. When God leads you, he, he meets your needs. So Paul prayed in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19, But my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. One of the ways to see this happen is for you to follow God's leading. Psalm chapter 23, beginning from verse 1, he said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leaded me beside the still waters. Thou preparest a table before me, even in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. When God leads you, you don't suffer scarcity. When God leads you, you don't suffer lack and want. Jesus said to them in Luke chapter 22, verse 35, When I sent you without pause or scripts, did you lack anything? And they said, Nothing. In Isaiah 48 and verse 17, he said, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth your hands to profit, which leadeth thee in the way that thou should go. In verse 21, and they tasted not when he led them. They went through the wilderness, yet they lacked nothing. Do you know that even in the wilderness, Israel was prosperous? Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. When God leads you, you command plenty of gold and silver. When God leads you, it's not a function of the location. It's a function of God who is with you. You want to see an end to financial crisis, financial breakdown, financial frustration, just follow his leading. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. And one of the primary ways through which God leads us is in his word. Follow the instructions of this book and you won't lack. Whatever he tells you to do in his book, do it. Thou shalt diligently hack in unto the voice of the Lord your God and observe to do all that I command you this day. Then the Lord your God will set you up on high above all the nations of the earth and all of these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. You'll be blessed in the city, blessed outside the city, your basket blessed, your storehouse blessed. All the product of your obedience to his word. In Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 he said, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night and observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall have good success. God's leading is the highway to our high places. God's leading is the highway to our high places. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 I referred earlier if you shall diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God and observe to do all that I command you this day, the Lord your God will set you up on high above all the nations of the earth. In verse 13, he said, you shall be above only, you shall not come beneath. In Isaiah 55, verse 9 and 10, he said, my ways are not your ways, neither are my thoughts your thoughts, as the heavens are far from the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. You want to fly high, align with his guidance. 
aligned with his ways of doing things. You don't have to wait until you hear the voice of God call you by your name. The Bible is the compass of destiny, the compass of life. If you have not followed the instructions of the Bible that is written, how do you follow the one that you don't know who said it? We saw how God led Gideon. He went forward and he marched a one-man deliverer. Judges chapter 6, verse 12 to 16. Thank you, Jesus. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? Where be all his miracles which our fathers told us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might. Thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And we saw how God brought his army from thousands to three hundred. To show that it is not by number, it is by guidance. Don't follow his guidance. Follow his guidance. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, every form of scarcity around your life will come to an end this month. I said this month, every form of scarcity around your life will come to an end. Some of you, you finish this exam rich. You will finish this exam in a strange financial status. Amen. It may not look like it now. You know, usually when exams are rounding up, your resource is supposed to be... How many of you understand that? Um, but this time around, it's going to be different. The exams, <laughs> exams are rounding up, but your resources will be going up. Amen. The ones who are receiving it are saying it louder. Amen. That is not to get you excited. I speak by the Spirit of the Lord. He said, when men are cast down, thou shalt say there is a lifting. In the name of Jesus, for someone under the sound of my voice, exams may be rounding up, but your own financial resources will be going up. Amen. You know, some persons will send you money that you don't need. You remember it was said so. Or you remember that it was told you so. Thank you, Jesus. How do I access divine guidance? Number one, by the witness of the Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 to 16. Thank you, Jesus. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Tell your neighbor, fear nothing. But you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. For the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The witness of the Spirit. What is the witness of the Spirit? It connotes an inward agreement, as it were. Your Spirit acknowledging the prompting of the spirit 
your spirit bearing witness with the spirit that yes, this is the way to go. How do I know when I have an inward witness? When there is a release on your inside. When you want to do certain things and you notice there is a constraint, that is a check on your spirit. That is a check on your inside. So the inward witness talks about, or the witness of the spirit talks about an inward acknowledgement. An acknowledgement on your inside. There is a knowing on your inside. There is release on your inside. There is peace on your inside. There is rest on your inside. I put it here, spirit to spirit agreement. So it means spirit to spirit. In Acts chapter 10, verse 19, and 20, it gives all these accounts. Acts 10, verse 19 and 20. Why Peter thought on the vision which he had, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore, get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. An inward acknowledgement. Acts chapter 16, verse 6 and 7. We see another example. Now when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia, and we are forbidden of the Holy Ghost. Say with me, in our check. They were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. What happened next? After they were come to Mysia, they are said to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. So in the first instance, he constrained them. In the second instance, he released them. A witness on your inside. The witness of the Spirit. So you want to make decision, no matter how little, check it on your inside. Is there an acknowledgement on my inside that this is the right way to go? So many of us have had the witness of the Spirit, but because we have not been trained, we have not been taught, we don't even know that it is the witness of the Spirit. You want to do something inside of you, you know this is not the right thing to do. How many of us have experienced it before? You can't explain it, but you know deep down inside of you that this is not the right thing to do. Sometimes you go ahead to do it because what is happening on your inside and what your flesh is saying, they are two different things, and you decided to follow your flesh or follow your emotion. Or follow your mind, what you think is the right thing to do. And then you got into trouble. So many times I've had people say, something told me that. How many of you have made some statement like that before? Something said that. It is not something. It is the spirit bearing witness with you, but you didn't just acknowledge it. Perhaps, maybe you didn't even know. But in the name of Jesus... May your spirit man become sensitive to the witness of the spirit. Amen. Now, let me quickly add this. You need to train and develop your spirit. To be effective in picking divine signals. To be effective in following the leading of the spirit. Whether by the witness of the spirit or by the inner witness. You need to train and develop your spirit. How do you train and develop your spirit? By spending quality time. Quality time, amongst other things, quality time in fellowship. Quality time, ministering to the Lord. Now, can I tell you this? It is not every time you listen to music that you are actually in the place of worship. Hello. You can be listening to music and you are distracted, you are absent-minded. You are hearing the song, but it is not ministering to you. Hello. How many of you know that you can't use listening to music to replace your personal worship? Hello? Is it important to listen to music? Yes. Do I do it a lot? But what I do as they sing, I sing with them. 
Hello? That is why me, I don't just play any kind of song. Any song that does not minister to me, forget it. No matter who sang it, it does not, it does not fly. Praise the Lord. So, in fact, most of the time, the song I play is a song that is singing in my inside. I go and look for it, and I play it. I can play one song for one month. The same thing. It will just be going up and down. <laughs> Let me share this with you. I had this strange pain on my right hand. I couldn't tell what it was. It was as though they tied a string from the tip of my finger to my arm. It was so painful. Sometimes it's as though someone pulls the string. And every time that is done, it's as though the pain hits my head. It was happening consistently. I couldn't tell where it came from. How it started, I don't know. I did everything I could, medical, everything. But one day I went to Bible school to teach. And I was teaching them on the subject of the Holy Spirit. And in the course of the teaching, that word just kept playing in my spirit. The Holy Ghost is the quickening spirit. The Holy Ghost is the life-giving spirit. And you carry this life-giving spirit on your inside. Life swallows up death because life is superior to death. You can't carry this quickening spirit on your inside and be sick. Immediately it occurred to me that ah, this thing you are telling these people about, it also concerns you too. Because the quickening spirit is also inside of you. When I finished from that class, after God did what he was going to do, as I came out, I decided I was not going to drive. I was going to walk to the office. And as I was walking to the office, right there on the road, I was screaming and shouting. The quickening spirit is on my inside. The Holy Ghost is the quickener. In the name of Jesus, this pain you are God. I was shouting and stretching the hand, hitting it back and forth. And all of that. And one of those days, while all of that was going on, I was doing that consistently for a while. I heard him saying, Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. And as the river flows, it shall bring every dead thing back to life. <laughs> and I know some of you know that song. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. I don't know why you sing your own, but I was singing that song specifically targeting that situation. And every time I sang, every time that song ministered in my spirit, it was addressing the issue of concern. This is the hand. Amen. When the pain left, I didn't know. How it left, I didn't know. But my testimony is established. Hello. Train and develop your spirit. Quality time in fellowship. Quality time in ministering to the Lord. Not for activity's sake. Not make them see me. No. If everybody applauds you and you don't have testimony, of what use is it? Spend quality time in the word. The word of God will get your spirit man to get into frequency with the spirit. It brings you to be attuned with the move of the spirit. Spend time in the word. Quality time. Quality time. Meditation. All of that helps your spirit, man, to take charge. Spend time. Praying in the Holy Ghost We help you to keep your body under. We help your spirit, man, to be charged. Said the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any treasure sword, piercing <laughs> through the bones and the marrows, and is a discerner of the intents of the heart. 
Develop your spirit. Tell your neighbor, develop your spirit. Say it louder. Say, develop your spirit. Quality time. Quality time. And as you do that, read your heart of offenses. Read your heart of anything that can hinder your prayers. Get rid of unforgiveness. Get rid of bitterness. Get rid of malice, hatred. You don't need all of that. Get rid of every sin that so easily beset. Get rid of the unnecessary weight that you carry. Free your spirit. Free your spirit, man. Practice walking in love. Practice forgive advancement. Ah, advance forgiveness, rather. Advance forgiveness. <laughs> advance forgiveness. Walk in love. You see, until your spirit man is well fed and nurtured. You can't pick the sins of the spirit. That is why you need to train your spirit. How do I access divine guidance number two? Through the prayer of inquiry. I mentioned a few days ago, only those who ask questions are entitled to answers. Prayer of inquiry. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. He said, call unto me. I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Lord, why am I always struggling during exams? Lord, why am I struggling with this course? Why am I struggling in my health? Why am I struggling financially? What would you have me do? What steps will you have me take? Which way will you have me go? Ask God questions. Not question God. Ask God questions. There are two different things. No, you say, no, God, we are thou. I don't feel your love anymore. Are you in covenant or did you go to another university? And then he says, I feel it all in all. God is not a traveler. God doesn't travel. <laughs> he feels it. The art is the loss and the fullness thereof. Stop questioning God. Why me? So why not you? Rather than question God, why me? You should ask God, Lord, what did I miss? What did I, what am I doing? What am I not doing right? What am I missing? What would you have me do? What steps would you have me take? He said, call. I will answer you and I will show you the grace. And mighty things which thou knowest not. Bible scholars tell us that David fought about 67 wars and David didn't lose one. But if you look at the life of David, you'll notice a pattern in the life of David. David was an inquirer. He was one who was always inquiring from God. The Amalekites inv invaded the city, took their wives, took their children, took all that they could take. The people thought of stoning David because they were angry, they were sorrowful. But the Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord. And the next thing he did, he said, bring me the effort. Lord, shall I pursue them? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord responded and said, pursue. Without fail, you shall overtake. Surely you shall overtake, and without fail, you shall recover all. He didn't just run after them. He went after them because God commanded him so. In 2 Samuel 5, the feeling sins, they came against him, verse 19 to 25. And David inquired of the Lord, shall I go up against them? Without deliver them into my hand. And the Lord said unto David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thy hand. 
Now, they came again the second time. David did not assume he went before the Lord again. And this time God said to him, wait. Thou shalt not go up, but fetch a compass behind them and come up upon them over again the mulberry tree. As soon as you hear the movement on the mulberry tree, then you know that I have gone before you. Ask questions. Lord, why is this thing like this? Which way out? Which way forward? Which way to go? What steps to take? Ask questions. Number three, access to divine guidance is through praise and worship. Through praise and worship. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 29 to 30, he said, you shall have a song as in the night when a holy solemnity is kept with gladness of heart. And as you do, the Lord will cause his glorious voice to be heard. Isaiah 30, 29 and 30. You shall have a song. I have more than a song today. And as you do so, we tell you, my son, my daughter, this is the way to go. Those who sing, don't sink. Those who sing, don't lack guidance. They came to meet Elisha to ask for direction. On what needed to be done. And Elisha said, bring me the minstrel. And they brought in the minstrel. And as the minstrel began to play, the hand of God came upon Elisha. At the instance of playing the minstrel. Second Kings 3, verse 14 to verse 19. The atmosphere of praise and worship is the atmosphere of instructions, directions, guidance. So don't just sing. Don't just get entertained. Watch out for encounters. Watch out for encounters. Praise and worship is going on. It's not only for you to be singing and jumping and moving your body. Watch out. Be sensitive. Watch out for encounters. Watch out for encounters. He said, thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. You will show me the path of life. Psalm 16, verse 11. You will show me the path of life. And how do you do that? Zechariah 2, verse 10. He said, sing, <laughs> O daughter of Zion. And I will come and dwell in the midst of thee. Sing. In Psalm 22, verse 3, he said, Thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praise of Israel. You want to access divine guidance? Sing. You want to come out of confusion? Sing. You want to come out of misdirection? Sing. And do it with understanding. Praise God with understanding. And so in a short while, we are going to be singing. Uh, understand why we are singing. Don't just be jumping up and down and shouting and screaming without anything to show. No. Focus. Know what to expect. Acts chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. The apostles, they gathered in fasting. I believe also in prayers. And as they ministered unto the Lord, the Holy Ghost said, Separate unto me Paul and Barnabas for the assignments that I have called them. As they ministered, the voice of the Lord came through to them. As they ministered. What are the proofs of being led by the Spirit? Number one is unstoppable passion. Unstoppable drive. Jeremiah to the 20, verse 9. Unstoppable drive, unstoppable passion. Fire shot up in my bones. 
Paul said in Galatians 1, verse 15 and 17, and when he pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by his grace, I conferred not with flesh and blood. How do I know the Spirit is leading me? Divine protection. When you are led by the Spirit, you are protected by the Spirit. There's a covering for you. Ephesians 1 and verse 13 says, You are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. And as they went from one nation to the other, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. You are covered. You enjoy divine protection. As I conclude, remember, only those who submit to his guidance are led by him. The meek will he teach his ways. The meek will he guide in judgment. You need humility of heart. Humility of heart. Humility of heart. Rise up on your feet.